The iPad Pro is a very big iPad, but it's also the best iPad to date, and I say that without hesitation. And I fully believe that anybody who made an iPad Pro rant video either did it just for the views or should not be reviewing technology. <laughs> Basically everything that makes a regular iPad good is even better with the iPad Pro, except portability. Portability is the one sacrifice being made, but it's not as bad as you'd think. It easily fits into 99% of backpacks, so it's not too big to take to school or to and from work. If it's too big to fit in your carry-on and you're on a plane twice a month, this just isn't the iPad for you. If you don't treat it like a product that should be portable, you're left with the best iPad experience you can get. And that's the target market for the iPad Pro, it's the people willing to sacrifice portability to get the best of everything else. Before I get too far in the video, I do want to talk about the price. Yes, the starting price of $700 is ridiculous, but the price has no effect of how good the product is. The price does affect whether or not a product is worth it, but it doesn't affect the product itself. With that in mind, let's get into it. So what makes an iPad a good iPad? For a lot of people, that's content consumption. Watching Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, you name it. While the phrase bigger equals better is not always true, in this case, bigger is definitely better. This oversized tablet sports a 12.9 inch display with an impressive resolution of 2732 by 2048. Unfortunately, you still get pretty sizable bezels all around the screen, making this already big iPad feel even bigger. And it doesn't have to do with the content consumption, but the fact that there are still only four rows of apps on this huge screen is straight up ridiculous. As most of you know, video is not the whole story when it comes to content consumption. Audio is just as important. And while the speakers on the iPad Pro aren't perfect, damn are they a leap in the right direction. The iPad Pro has two sets of stereo speakers, resulting in a speaker in each corner of the device. They sound amazing and get crazy loud without distortion. But what keeps them from being perfect is their location, on the side. If they were front facing, they'd be perfect, but no. I should note that the almost angled orientation of the speakers results in almost an amplification effect when you place it flat on the table, but when you're just holding it, the audio is going away from the user. While I can get over the lack of portability of this 1.6 pound device, that weight affects more than just portability. It affects just overall use. It's uncomfortable and inconvenient to use a 1.7 pound device. You have to be leaning on something like your legs or a pillow to be comfortable. If you're just holding it with no support, your arms will get tired and you'll just be uncomfortable. Not a deal breaker, just inconvenient. So what about people that use an iPad for work? Whether it be emailing, web browsing, note taking, maybe a little keynote? Well again, bigger is better. Not only does the larger form factor allow you to see more information in each app, but the big screen also takes multitasking to the next level. You can use two full apps side by side, and in most cases, it actually doesn't feel cramped and you can get some solid work done. I don't use mine for work that often, but I can easily see how having Chrome right next to Docs makes writing a paper a lot easier. Apple seems to claim that the other big audience for the iPad Pro is creators, people that use the iPad Pro above all else to make things. That's not really something I agree with, but I guess there are people out there that use the iPad Pro as their main creative machine. Creators is a broad term though. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to focus on video production and artistry. For video production, yes, this iPad is the best yet. It's rocking their A9X chip, which should fly through anything you hand to it, and it's got that high resolution display. And for artistry, that's where the Apple Pencil comes into play. I'm gonna do a whole video on the Apple Pencil itself, but for now, yes, the big display on the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil together make for a very good drawing experience. Keep in mind, those tasks are better on the iPad Pro than other iPads, but I would still never use an iPad Pro to edit a video instead of a laptop or a desktop. Those are the target audiences of the iPad Pro, but that still doesn't fully explain why it's the best iPad yet. It's the best iPad yet because every task, even the smallest things like typing on the on-screen keyboard, are made a lot better. Games like Infinity Blade that I haven't played for years are brought back to life with the beautiful display and immersive sound. If you aren't willing to sacrifice the portability or don't have $700 to spend, don't worry, I get it. It's really not worth the money anyway. But if you do have that kind of money and you don't need the portability, this is absolutely the best iPad experience you can get. Thank you for watching, subscribe to see more content, and as always, stay classy.